Okay, next one, let's look at step three. Test statistic used, okay? Uh, we use X bar. This is our test statistic. X bar is the sample percentage. We use sample percentage to estimate to estimate pi. Pi is a population. percentage. This is the unknown population percentage. Okay, the true chance for the given coin to get ahead. Okay, this is unknown population percentage. This is a population parameter. And sample percentage is a sample one statistic. And we use sample statistic to estimate population parameter. In our case, X bar is sample percentage. We use sample percentage to estimate pi, population percentage of getting heads, okay? Now, why this is called sample percentage instead of sample mean? Well, let me write it down. It's X1 plus X2 plus all the way up to what? X100 divided by 100. If you get a head, you count one head. If you get a tail, you get hmm, a zero head. So this is total heads what obtaining divided by 100. That's a sample percentage of getting heads. Okay. And in this case, we call sample percentage because XK is one or zero. If K is free, is a head. You count one head. If case rape is not a head, it's a tail. You count what? You don't see a head. Okay? So zero head. So this is otherwise. Okay? So XK follow Bernoulli. So Bernoulli you add a sequence of one and zero. So this is called sample count. Sample counts divided by sample size. This is what we call sample percentage. We use sample percentage to estimate population percentage. And our decision to reject H0 if p value is too small. Two questions. Why small p value lead to the rejection of H0? This we cannot explain now because we don't even introduce you what's p value so far. Now, second question. P value is too small. How small you consider is too small? Okay, question. How small is small? Well, if p value Less than alpha. Remember, we choose alpha equal to 5%. If the observed p value less than alpha equal to 5%, we say the observed p value is significantly small. For significantly small p value, we reject it now. But Next question, why small p-value lead to the rejection of H0, not the large p-value? This one, I postpone until the, we finish what? The whole thing, then you can understand better, okay? Now, next one, let's flip to the next page. Calculation, calculation, compute of the p-value. P-value, what's p-value? This is a definition. Under the assumption that H0 is true, how likely test statistic behaves at least as extreme as the observed value, okay? So I'm gonna explain this one slowly, okay? Begin with X bar. X bar is a sample percentage. And what's a sample size? Sample size is 100. Okay, and this is large enough. For 
centrally means zero. Okay. So x bar will follow approximately normal. Okay, it follow approximately normal. And the center is expected value of x bar. Okay, it's expected value of x bar. Expected value of x bar is mu. If what? If xk don't follow Bernoulli. Okay? Or some books say if the box for some elementary what course, they may say the population is not from a zero one box. Okay? Now expected value of sample mean is mu, the population mean. This is population mean. If xk don't follow Bernoulli, mu is the population mean. Now in our example, it's pi. It's pi huh? if xk follow Bernoulli. Okay, and here pi means population percentage. And what do you know about population percentage? Hmm? Under H not is true. Under the assumption that H not is true. Remember, we assume the given coin is a failed coin. Pi is equal to one half. Okay. Under H not is true is one half. But I'm not going to write as one half. I'm going to write this as 50 over 100. That is to say, when you flip the coin 100 times, you expect to see 50 heads from a failed coin. What you expect to see from a failed coin is 50. But what you actually observe is not 50. What you actually observe is only what? It's only 40. 40 out of 100. Okay? That is what you actually observed. Okay? What you actually observe is 40 out of 100. But what you expect to see from a failed coin is 50 over 100. Under H92, what you observe should be close to what you expect. If this doesn't close to what you expect, further deviate from your expectation. That is what we call what? extreme, okay? That's what we call extreme. Uh, why this is extreme? Because you see too few heads. Because you see too few heads. Okay, that's called extreme. Under H not is true. Let's look at the definition. Under H not is true. When the coin is not a when the coin is a fail coin, okay? When this is a fail coin, pi equal to one half. What is the test statistic used? The test statistic used is sample percentage. And what is the observed value? What is the observed value of the test statistic? In 100 flip, you see 40 heads. That's what you observed. Under H92, when this is a fail coin, 100 flip, you expect to see 50 heads. Now, you only see what? 40. Under H92, what you observe should close to what you expect. If it doesn't close what you expect, further deviate from your expectation. That's called extreme. So in this case, x bar less or equal to what? 40 over 100. At least means equal. More extreme means what? Less. 
So that, that's why I can write x bar less or equal to what? 40 over 100, given this is a failed coin. How likely are you going to see this happen? Under this is a failed coin, how likely are you going to observe sample percentage? Huh? Less or equal to what? 40 over 100, okay? This give a huh? clear explanation about what we mean extreme, okay? And what we mean observative, and also test statistic. And under H9 is true, pi is 50%, okay? Think about this. Uh, you have 20 seconds, think about this, okay? Okay, now, under H92, what we observe should be close to what we expect. If this doesn't close to what we expect, further deviate from the expectation, that is core. That is co extreme. Okay? That is co extreme. So, under H92, you expect to see close to 50. But if it doesn't close to 50, further less or equal to 40, that means what? Huh? Too few heads you find in this direction. Okay? So that's co extreme. Now, let's give what? A more clear explanation on what we mean extreme data. Under the assumption that H naught is true, the collect data support H A. That means do not support. H not. That's co extreme. It's like what? Like uh, your boyfriend always say he likes you or he loves you. That's the H not. But what is the data you collect? Well, a hundred times walk out with your boyfriend, 99 times he was busy watching the other beautiful girl on the street. That's co extreme. Okay? Because under H not is true if your boyfriend really likes you or really loves you. Huh? That shouldn't happen, okay? So, what is extreme? Under H naught is true, the collect data support H A. Do not support H naught, that's called extreme, okay? That's very strange, okay? That's very strange. So, what is our H A? Our H A, remember we choose pi not equal to what? One half. So, not just too few heads, not just too few heads, you call extreme. When you see too many heads, that's also extreme. Say 60 over 100. If you flip the coin 100 times, you see 60 heads or even more. That means what? This side means too many heads. That means too many heads. Okay? This is also DVA from what you expect. Huh? 50 out of 100. Now, some people may ask, why this is 60? Well, let's take a look. From 40 to 50, that is 10. From 50 to 60, that's also 10. So this is equally extreme. Can you see that? This side means too few heads. This side means what? Too many heads. So let's come back to give this one a concrete explanation. Under H naught is true when you have a failed coin, okay? How likely sample percentage is what? Less or equal to 40 over 100. Why 40 over 100? This is what you observe and this is for even what? More extreme. 40 over 100 less or equal is even what? More extreme, okay? Now, equal is what you observe. Less 40 over 100 is even more extreme. And that means this is what? Too few heads. That's what we call what? Extreme. But there is another direction. Over 60, 60 over 100. When this is a failed coin. 
this one and this one are equally extreme. And why you consider the upper tail as well? Because when your HA is not equal, too many heads, too few heads, they are both what? Consider extreme. So you need to add this probability as well, okay? So this is two-sided. But since normal distribution is what? It's metric. So these two tails, they are actually the same. So many textbooks just tell you well, when you see this is two-sided, all you need to do is two times what? Probability x bar less equal to 40 over 100 given pi equal to one half, okay? This is your p-value, okay? This is your p-value. And let me put a star here, okay? Later on, I'm gonna refer to what? This expression, okay? So, p-value, okay? Two times probability, given this is a fair coin, how likely x bar going to what? going to be less or equal to 40 over 100, but times two, right? This is a p-value. Our next job is find the, huh, the size of what? These two tails, okay? Or you say we find want to find the probability of this expression, okay? And how can we do that? Um, Okay, in order to find the size of the shady area, as usual, our first step is standardize what? We need to standardize x bar, okay? And standardization is any random variable, subtract by its mean, and then divide it by its what? Divide it by standard deviation. We'll convert into z-score, standard normal distribution, okay? Now, let's go a little bit further. X bar minus what's expected variance X bar? It's mu. Divided by square root of variance X bar is square root of sigma square over N. Okay? And this is a case because XK follow what? The newbie. If xk don't follow Bernoulli, we can rewrite the expression as x bar minus e x bar. Remember the mean of a Bernoulli random variable. The mean of a Bernoulli random variable hmm, is a probability, the probability of getting success. Okay? And square root of variance x bar. Okay? What is the variance? Okay, recall. If W follow what? Bernoulli with parameter pi. Then the mean of the Bernoulli, okay? Then the mean of the Bernoulli is a probability, the probability of getting success. And variance of the Bernoulli is a product of two probability, one for success, one for failure, okay? So it is very easy to remember. So let's apply here. This is variance. And the variance of Bernoulli is pi times one minus pi. And I divide it by n. This is a case if xk follow Bernoulli with parameter pi. Okay? Now, under h not is true, what do we know? What do we know about pi? Hmm? When H naught is true, this expression can be written as X bar minus pi is what? A fail coin, one half. And the expression here, one half times one half divided by a hundred. So that is to say, I can further simplify this expression as X bar minus one half divided by one over 20. Okay, divided by one over twenty. So our standardization for what? These two value goes this way. Okay, goes this way.
0 0.6 minus 1 half divided by 1 over 20. Okay? And the other one, 40 over 100, if you standardize it. Okay? And this is 0. Okay, this is 0. And this one is 0 0.4 minus 1 half divided by 1 over 20. This convert to what? This convert to minus 2. So what is p value? As you can see, p value. is pi equal to one half, x bar less or equal to what? 40 over 100. But remember, since it's two-sided, you need to times two, okay? Now, if we standardize it, it's two times what? Probability that z score less equal to minus two. And this probability, Checking the normal distribution table, standard normal distribution table, you will find this is two times probability 0 0.0228. And two times this is 4.56%, which is less than alpha equal to 5%. So by the decision we made in step three, right? P value less than alpha equal to 5%. Okay, p value is too small. We're going to reject what? H naught. Okay, this is briefly cover the first one, cover step of step five. We will come up back with more explanation on step five. Okay, let's take a short break here.